So you're super serious about your espresso and need a machine that reflects your passion. Maybe you've been limited by a finicky entry level single boiler machine or you're ready to jump right in with a first machine that's very capable. Hey espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today I'll cover what you need to know before you decide on a prosumer level machine that's right for your needs. Now in this video, I will not be making hard machine recommendations. If you'd like to learn about our top machine picks, use a link up here for a video featuring our favorite semi-automatic choices. What I've got today is some basic considerations and some insider knowledge, important features and qualities of certain machines and manufacturers that frankly many current owners may not even know about. For example, did you know that some machines can do line pressure pre-infusion when plumbed in and some cannot? Do you know which brand makes a dual boiler machine that's a thousand dollars less than the competition yet just as capable? Do you know which manufacturer makes machines with best in class steaming performance? And do you know why some users prefer vibration pumps over rotary pumps? Well, stick with me and I'll answer all those questions and a lot more. So at Whole Latte Love, we carry machines from about a dozen manufacturers and there's plenty of machines from other manufacturers that we don't. Why? Well, we offer an industry best three year parts and labor warranty on all our prosumer level machines. So we have to be very selective in the machines that we carry. They have to meet our high standards for quality and reliability. We visit manufacturer production facilities. We know their products inside and out. Our service center works on hundreds of machines every year and every prosumer machine we ship goes through testing and setup by our factory certified techs before it gets to you. Now, if you got questions before you purchase or you need some help after, our coffee pros are just a phone call, chat, or email away. If you'd like to talk to a coffee pro, use a link up here for our contact info to get some free one-on-one -on -one advice. And of course, I can always help you out right here in the comments. So let's get into the machines, what you need to know and that insider knowledge. Now, at the prosumer level, we're generally talking about machines with either a heat exchange boiler or dual boilers, full commercial size, 58 millimeter portafilters, substantial groups and robust construction. So let's cover the boilers first. If you've ever made a latte using a single boiler machine, you know you can't brew and steam at the same time. It's a dual use boiler, so you either brew your espresso first and then There's wait for the machine to heat up to steaming idea. temperature, or steam your milk first and cool down the boiler to brewing temperature. With a heat exchange or dual boiler machine, you can brew and steam at the same time. Not only does that save you time, but it makes a better milk-based drink as your espresso or milk froth doesn't fall apart while you're waiting for that temperature change. In a heat exchange boiler, it's one big boiler with an isolated section within the boiler supplying cooler water for brewing. In most cases, water constantly circulates via thermosiphon from the inner section out to the group head and back. That heats the group for temperature stability and cools the water within the inner section to a temperature that's appropriate for brewing. For controlling the temperature in the boiler, if you go back a few years, it was usually a pressure stat doing that. It measures the pressure within the boiler, which equates to a temperature. In the last few years, more machines have started using PIDs to control temperature in HX boilers. Now, PIDs are far more accurate than pressure stats. They use logic and very short pulses of energy to the heating element to eliminate the temperature swings. In a machine with a pressure stat in boiler temps can swing as much as five or 10 degrees when the machine is sitting idle. Under PID control, an HX boiler swings about maybe one degree. Examples of machines with heat exchange boilers and PID control are the Proftec Pro 500 PID, Rocket Evo R's and Type V's in the Giotto and Mozafiato models. Now, heat exchange machines using pressure stack controlled temperature typically require a cooling flush prior to making espresso. The new crop of HX machines with PID do not. They produce accurate brew temps. Our SCASE testing shows manufacturers have done an outstanding job of engineering thermosiphon systems to avoid overheating brew water 
and produce accurate brew temps without flushing. Now that said, some users may prefer a heat exchange machine with a pressure stat. On those, using a timed flush allows them to quickly adjust brew temps. A few seconds longer on the flush and you get a cooler brew temp. A few seconds shorter and you get a higher brew temp. Now, one caveat there is you really don't know what the brew temp is. It's an immediate change, but a bit of a guessing game. On a PID machine, it takes longer for a temperature change to fully stabilize as the thermosiphon equalizes the group. Personally, I prefer PID. I know what the brew temp is, it's repeatable, and the flushing on a non-PID machine tends to fill up drip trays really fast, and I hate emptying drip trays. Beyond PIDs and pressure stats, the other major considerations on HX machines are pump type and group type. Pumps are either vibration or rotary. Vibration pumps are most common. There are only a few HX boiler machines with rotary pumps. Rotary pumps are considered commercial grade, but there's nothing wrong with a vibration pump. In fact, some users prefer them as they ramp up to brew pressure more slowly than a rotary pump. The result is a short period of a lower pressure pre-infusion prior to reaching full brewing pressure. Although not controllable, it may be beneficial and slightly reduce the chance of channeling during an extraction as the coffee has some time to swell up prior to full pressure brewing. On the downside, well, vibration pumps tend to be a little noisier and very few vibration pump machines are plumbable direct to a water line, while most rotary pump machines are. Examples of HX machines with rotary pumps are Rocket Espresso's PID-equipped Evolutioni R, Mozofiato, and Giotto machines. For group type, the E61 with thermosiphon is fairly standard. There are a few machines with electrically heated groups like Bezzera's BZ10. Rather than relying on a flow of hot water from the boiler to heat the group, an embedded thermostat monitors the group temperature and heats it as needed. The main benefit is a group that's up to temp in as little as 10 minutes, where an E61 group with a thermosiphon may require 20 minutes or more for full warm up. So to recap, HX boiler machines, your main considerations are temperature control. Do you want the no flushing required accuracy of a PID machine or would you prefer the quick brew temperature changes using time flushes on a pressure stat machine? Then pump type. Most all HX machines use vibration pumps, but there are a few like the Rocket Evo R's which have a rotary pump. They're a little quieter and are plumbable direct to a water line. And then the group. Thermosiphon E61 is the norm, but there are electrically heated groups like on some Bedzera machines for faster warm up times. Let's get into dual boiler machines. Now at the start of the video, I promised to tell you about one that's every bit as capable as machines that run about $1,000 more, and it's the Expo Bar Brutus 4. Now, beauty of course is in the eye of the beholder, and there are machines with more refined external finishing, but if you are looking for the best value in a dual boiler, PID, rotary pump, plumbable machine, it's definitely the Brutus 4R. If you're all about the value without compromising on performance, do check out the Brutus. Now, the norms for dual boiler machines are rotary pumps, PID temp control, E61 groups, and of course, the separate boilers. One makes the steam and a second boiler heats the brew water. With isolated boilers, brew temps are even more stable than on the PID heat exchange machines, and you can adjust them faster you typically get better steaming performance as well with a dedicated boiler. And on many machines, you can turn the steam boiler off if you're just making espresso. Speaking of steam, at the start of the video, I mentioned I'd clue you in on machines with the best in-class steaming performance, and they are the Profitec Pro 600, the Pro 700, and the ECM Synchronica. All three machines run the steam boiler at near two bar of steam pressure. That compares to other dual boiler machines running at about 1.2 bar of pressure. That extra steam pressure is a big deal. If milk drinks are your thing, it puts commercial type power in your home or office. Other differences come down to finish and features. While the Expo Bar Brutus is built like a tank with some of the thickest metal found in a machine case, it is somewhat utilitarian in design. As you go up in price, you'll get machines with refined edge work, extra detailed craftsmanship that's gonna make a statement. 
Some machines use lever for steam and hot water valves, while others use knobs. As for features, some machines have PID displays, which change to shot timers when an extraction begins. Others hide or remove controls from the face of the machine to maintain a classic look with no digital displays. That's a common theme found on Rocket Espresso products. But Zara's dual boiler, matrix, and duo machines go the other way with touchscreen panels used for all control, including boiler pressures, PID temps, auto on off functions, and maintenance reminders. And their matrix machine even has light up adjustable color clear side panels. Now, one last thing to consider is what's under the hood of the machines. It's something that we pay a lot of attention to, the quality of internal components and how they are engineered. And it's where I'll bring up my last piece of inside information. Now, all machines with an EC61 group are capable of pre-wetting coffee in the portafilter prior to applying full brewing pressure. Just a few are capable of doing a pressure-controlled pre-infusion when plumbed direct to a water line. Among those are the Profitec Pro 700 and the ECM Synchronica. Raise the E61 lever to just before the pump comes on and whatever pressure is on the plumbed line is applied to the coffee. If you put a pressure regulator on the plumbed line, you can dial in whatever pre-infusion pressure you like. If you're an espresso geek, it's a very cool and useful feature. So that wraps up our basic look at heat exchange and dual boiler machines. If you want to learn more about any prosumer level machine we carry, just go to Whole Latte Love, find the machine, and chances are we've got an in-depth video review that'll get you under the hood and cover all the machine's features. Or use the link up here for information on getting some friendly free one-on-one -on -one advice from one of our coffee pros. Or, of course, you can use those comments for any questions you might have, and I'll personally get you the answers. I'm Mark. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come on back soon for more of the best on everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love. Want to learn more? Subscribe now so you'll know about the latest videos on everything coffee from Whole Latte Love.